Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. As always, make sure you subscribe if you enjoy what you see. Today we're going to be racing in Talladega for, um, I think, what race number 9 or 10 of the season. Uh, currently without any wins and we've had a new winner so far in every race this season. And we're going to see if that continues uh, again here in Talladega, obviously the last plate track we ran, Trevor Bain won the Daytona 500 for his second career win and second career Daytona 500 victory. And we came into qualifying and I had to, I had to put in a full custom setup to even uh, have a decent amount of speed compared to the AI. And you see coming through the trial, we were actually overheating coming into the end of our qualifying attempt. And we came across the line and it was not a good lap at all. And we qualified P35 for Talladega and I decided to completely change the setup for the race. Today we make our first stop at Talladega Super Speedway for today's running of the Geico 500. Talladega is 2.66 miles long, making it the longest track in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Its relatively wide layout also allows drivers to run in rows of three, four, and sometimes even five lanes. Such close quarter racing is thrilling for us, but leaves them little time to react to any incident, raising the possibility of the big one. Who will stay out of trouble and make their way to victory lane today? Let's head down to the track and find out. All right, we are ready for the green flag to drop here in Talladega. Clint Boyer is your pole winner. On the outside pole, we have Denny Hamlin. So there's your front row as Austin Dillon gets sent to the back due to an engine change after qualifying. And his teammate Daniel Hemrick had an unapproved body modification during qualifying, which also sends him towards the back as we are ready to go green behind the 24 of William Byron, who's alongside his teammate Alex Bowman up ahead as the green flag flies in Talladega. And we are underway from P33 after gaining two spots due to two drivers being sent to the back. A little bit of a shot to William Byron's back bumper as we cross the line. Hopefully we can manage to use this inside line to my advantage. Usually that's kind of how you work your way to the front at a plate track in this game is just run the bottom and you will eventually cycle your way forwards. And we really had to rely on the draft in this race because even with a full custom setup, this car was still slower. Uh, if you were to put me in a drag race against a three-star car, I would still get outbeat by them, uh, even though I'm in a five-star team, which makes zero sense as we go into turns three and get really wide, and we get hit by Corey LeJoy on the left-hand side, but we do hang on to the car, so we get shuffled out to the top behind Alex Bowman now alongside fellow Canadian uh, DJ Kennington in the, num in the number 96 car, but certainly not a very good start as I went into turns three, and the car just did not want to turn for some reason. But we were able to get back down to the bottom line at the end of lap one as DJ Kennington was able to clear me, which allowed me to get under Alex Bowman as we go into turns one a little bit loose this time instead of being tight. Now under the 34 of Michael McDowell. Already single file up at the front of the pack. You can see in the distance as we try to dive to the bottom of Kennington and make it three wide with him and Michael McDowell down the back straight away with help from William Byron. And we cycled through a couple laps later and gained uh, two or three spots now up to P30, P31 still battling with DJ Kennington down the back straightaway as we side draft him on the left rear trying to make sure he does not pull away and there's that three star team I was talking about how they can really go faster than my car unfortunately as you can see up front at this point really starting to get a pretty single file up ahead so we need to try and get to uh, the as or gain as many positions as we can before it gets all single file because that's going to completely destroy our chances of gaining any track position. Now as we come to lap seven in stage one, you see we get we got up to P24 now alongside the 95 of Casey Kane down the back straightaway going into turns three. Kevin Harvick he's kind of hung out to dry as he slides down in front of the 21 of Paul Menard who's trying to get down in front of me and I'm trying to get to his inside as we do not allow Menard to fill that gap. Now as we are closing in on the top 20 as Harvick really off the pace compared to us on the inside line as he has kind of really only help from Ryan Newman as Brendan Gunn he slides up the track so I'd take full advantage and take him and Ryan Newman three wide into turns one and now we're going to enter the top 20 which is our goal position so we might finally be able to beat that goal position now as we come to a little bit later uh, coming to lap nine sitting in P19 behind Matt DiBettedetto in the number 32 cars we give him a shove across the line to hit five laps to go in the stage and we slowly but uh, surely we're able to obviously work our way 
forwards a little bit. You kind of see it, the pack racing right now is just not uh, what it should be. And I, I'm not sure if like an update came to the game and just kind of made it as not as good. But the, the pack racing just does not seem as good lately in this game as we come to just about two laps to go now in the stage. Up to 16th behind 15th place, Daniel Suarez at a turn four. He's running a different paint scheme, a ruckus paint scheme. I've not seen that one on track yet as we have the two um, yellow Penske cars battling in front of us. It's Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney as we go into turns one. All the Penske cars are right together as Brad Kozlowski is just ahead of Logano as well as Blaney. He gets hung out by the uh, 22 of Logano. Now as he starts to fall back as we push Daniel Suarez on the inside of him trying to gain some time now as we did get to the inside of Suarez coming to the white flag and we're able to gain the position on him as we gave uh, Joey Logano a shove and that gives him quite a bit of momentum into turns one but he was not able to do anything with it as he just kind of slid in behind the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and kind of got back into position as we come out of turn two just over half a lap left to go in stage one down the back straightaway looks like Logano might take Stenhouse three wide with Almirola as we go down the back straightaway into turn three Stenhouse does get down in front of the 22 as he rides on the inside of Eric Almirola through turns three now turns four as we get to Logano's bumper and give him a shove and we got problems Ryan Blaine goes into the wall on the exit of turn four but he's going to keep the car straight as you see a ton of smoke coming from his car as we come through the tri-oval it's going to stay green and we're going to come across the line and get P14 in stage one. No stage of we had a solid effort in stage one we gained about 20-ish positions so we will restart on the outside line though everyone's pitting and we learned from the Daytona 500 at a plate track you can take four tires on a pit stop and the AI are going to do the same thing so we take four tires and come up P14 losing no positions as Jimmy Johnson is ready to lead us to the green flag he already has a win this season now trying to do the same thing by getting his second win as we are green and stage two is underway as the leaders cross the line now we are behind the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the fifth uh, fifth third bank car as we give him a little bit of a shove into turn one he did not have the greatest launch now as our teammate Jimmy McMurray is hung out to dry and that's going to completely destroy his running position now as he uh, he fades outside of the top 10 and something went way wrong behind me so we were able to slide down behind the 24 of William Byron as we just had a huge gap between the two packs right there as now they start to close up as we have Matt Benedetto now on my back bumper as we force a three wide under William Byron just about four wide into turn three now under the 24 car. Chase Elliott for the first car kind of separated from this little pack right here is Byron he's able to clear himself and now Stenhouse gets clear as I just could not keep the same speed that they had unfortunately as we come through the tri-oval having uh, I believe that is Reed Sorensen and Ross Chastain on my outside as we cross the line to complete lap one in stage two we gain one position now as we try to get to the bottom of Stenhouse but he is going to make sure that I cannot do that as he cleared himself from me and now gets under the nine of Chase Elliott through turns one and two now on the exit of two Elliott start, starts to fade just a little bit as we take him and Stenhouse three wide for a brief moment down the back straight away now is Stenhouse he's able to just pull away from me a bit and clear himself once again as he and Elliott continue to battle side by side now as we get to the bottom of Elliott Suarez Boyer and Elliott all kind of stuck on the outside leading that line and now drifting backwards not in the right direction obviously as we come out of turn four with a chance to now approach the top 10 as Suarez he continues to drift back as uh, Boyer was able to get down behind me and now we have entered the top 10 here in Talladega as we have passed Daniel Suarez now to the inside of Stanhouse going into turns one and we're easily going to be able to get uh, the pass on him complete now through turns one and two we do clear him with ease now up to P9 behind William Byron in the number 24 car now we come to lap three uh, the running order did not really change obviously as you can see still running behind the 24 of William Byron and we get a caution the first legit caution of the race Jimmy Johnson still leads at this point but he's going to be restarting with the 43 of Bubba Wallace on his outside and behind him he's going to have I believe that is AJ Allmendinger as we ready to go green it's going to be just five laps to go in stage two as we restart on the inside from P9 behind Joey Logano who goes way up the track not sure what he was trying to accomplish there but I decided we need to might as well go for a move on his inside in turns one is Denny Hamlin not with a very good launch but we give him a bump to close him back up 
to the 47 of AJ Allmendinger as now Matt DiBenedetto. He follows me in line. We have a few drivers here who are not usually uh, front runners now in the top 10. We got DiBenedetto and uh, Busher now down the back straightaway. Or Omendinger, that is, in the 47 as we go three wide with Denny Hamlin as we get up the throttle a little, little bit going into turns three. Trying to stay on the inside, though. You see up ahead, Bubba Wallace has cleared himself of Jimmy Johnson to take the lead here in Talladega as we come out of turn four. Bubba Wallace in his home state of Alabama trying to get his first career win, trying to get a playoff point with a stage two victory first before he can even think about a victory as we approach now the top five as we hit four to go side by side between Almendinger and Kyle Busch now into turns one and two. Jimmy Johnson gets to the inside of Bubba Wallace and he's trying to retake the lead as we come through turns one and two with Denny Hamlin now behind me to give me some help as the 47 drifts way up the track. We're going to slide up behind him now as we were able to actually get past him and Kyle Busch as we come to just over a lap and a half. We go in stage two as we give the 43 of Bubba Wallace a shove down the back straightaway. We got Matt DeBenedetto in the 32 who has continued to work his way forward now he sits behind me coming into turns three as Bubba Wallace with a pretty um, large run on the 48 for a moment but it kind of stalled out once he got uh, disconnected from my front bumper now as we come out of turns four he's going to have to make a move pretty soon if he wants a chance to win the stage as we come down in front of Matt DiBenedetto through the trioval as Bubba looks on the 48 now as the 48 goes up the track just a little bit as we come across the line Bubba Wallace is going to be looking to the inside going into turns one and he is there Bubba Wallace making a move to the lead on the last lap of stage two as Jimmy Johnson and the 48 car is hung out to dry and that's certainly going to dis destroy his finishing position likely in stage two as we come down the back straightaway behind Bubba Wallace in the 43 car he's trying to hang on for his first stage victory of the season as the 48 of Johnson you see behind me continues to drop back down the order as behind us Casey Kane makes a move on the inside of uh, Matt DiBenedetto now coming through turns three and four for the final time in stage two Bubba Wallace is definitely going to hang on we have no chance of catching him as you come through the trioval you see I let the 95 go to my inside because I decided third place is better to start in stage three than second so I let the 95 get second place and we get P3 in stage two. So we're lined up on the inside behind the leader of Bubba Wallace going into the final stage here as once again, they pit. So we're gonna come in and take four tires and two cans of fuel. And hopefully that will be enough to get us to the end of this race. Once again, we come up P3 just where we came in as Bubba Wallace will lead us to the green flag to start stage three, the final stage. Casey Kane's going to be starting in a bad spot on the outside. That's why I kind of let him have the spot. His green flag is back out, and we are underway in Talladega for the final stage of the race. Just 18 laps to go now as we push the 43 into turns one and two. He opens up the gap just a little bit as we go into the corner as Matt DiBattadetto closes up on my back bumper. He has been kind of riding behind me throughout this whole race as the outside line just drops fast as now we pull away as Jimmy Johnson, he's third in line on the inside. He is trying to rebound from being hung out to dry at the end of stage two from Bubba Wallace and myself as we come down the back straight away, pulling away actually me and the 43R from third place of Matt DiBenedetto. But once we go into turns three and four, you see DiBenedetto in my mirror closes the gap back up as we come uh, through turns three and four now on the exit of turn four. Bubba Wallace doing a good job kind of in command of the pack now as Kyle Busch closes up the gap using the outside line and he's actually going to get to my outside through the trioval and you can really see the speed difference at the plate tracks as Kyle Busch just completely blows by me going into turns one and two. He is clear and now Chase Elliott's going to make a power move with basically no help at all on the outside of me and clear me as well as we come through turns one and two. We're going to have to try and draft the nine car, get up behind him on the exit of two. Now there's the 90 of Casey Gaines kind of rebounding from a slow restart as he goes up to P5 for the moment as Kyle Busch now within range to make a move on Bubba Wallace as we're going to turns three he tries to make a move there but Bubba Wallace kind of chops his nose to make sure that move does not happen as we come through turns three and four De Benedetto and Casey Kane continue to battle behind me side by side and up here we're actually kind of pulling away a little bit at the moment uh, the top four of us are just in a single file line as De Benedetto now starts to close up through the trioval as he continues to battle side by side with the 95 of Casey Kane as Kyle Busch cannot find a way to make a 
to move on the uh, 43 of Bubba Wallace at the moment with uh, just about 16 laps to go in this race as time slowly starts to run out now as the Benedetto has gotten clear of the 95 and now he's going to join our little party up here now as he is going to have a big run through the middle line. He might even try to make a move on my outside. Now he's going to slide in behind me as Kyle Busch. He's hung out to dry, and you know what? I decided to do him a favor. I let him in. I, I backed out of the throttle, and I figured I'd be a nice driver and let Kyle Busch back into the line. I didn't want him to be rude. I mean, we've kind of done things earlier in the season to him that he wasn't happy about, so we decided to maybe repay the favor a little bit as Chase Elliott takes second place from him. Now with a chance also to get to the lead as if he can steal it from Bubba Wallace as Kyle Busch goes way up the track there, but he is able to get down in front of me as Casey Kane once again has gotten to the outside of Matt DiBenedetto now has come down the back straightaway Elliott all by himself on the inside of the line he might actually be able to get to the inside of Bubba Wallace as I come down and block the 32 of DiBenedetto is going to turn three Kyle Busch once again maybe going to slide down there he goes as Casey Kane now finds a way to my outside quarter panel as he's probably not going to stick there long as we come out of turn four we easily clear him with help of the draft from the 9 and the 18. Now through the trial we really could not find anywhere to go. We just kind of had to ride in line now as we come to 11 laps to go. You see Matt DiBenedetto, he was able to get past me and Bubba Wallace actually drifted backwards as he got hung out by the 9 and the 18. So Chase Elliott now at this point in the race leads the pack as we come down the back straight away getting ready to hit 10 laps to go this time by now behind the 32 of DiBenedetto Kyle Busch and P2 ready to pounce on Elliott like right here in turns three and four. He's going to make a move to the inside of Elliott. Can he get down there as Elliott is going to try his best to stay in command as we exit turn four. He does keep the lead for the moment as we have help from AJ Allmendinger behind us as Logano lurks in the background. You see as he's trying to lead this field uh, behind him up to the front now as we hit 10 laps to go in this race Elliott continues to lead as Matt DiBenedetto makes a move to the inside of Kyle Busch and he's going to take over second place now from the 18 as we come through turns one and two he's going to not be able to make a move on the nine at the moment but down the back straightaway he might have a chance but I decided I'd rather help uh, a front runner right now because I don't want another wasted playoff position as controversial as that might sound as we go three wide into turns three now for the lead and this is when I decided to go to the bottom because I don't want to lose any positions myself so I helped Matt DiBenedetto through turns three and four and he clears Elliott and Kyle Busch for the lead as Elliott drifts back to P4 now as we even get past him coming through the trioval now. Now Chase Elliott looks to our outside as we come across the line. It is nine laps to go in this race as Kyle Busch closes the gap on Matt DiBenedetto as we go into turns one and two. Elliott staying pretty comfortable on my outside. He does not want to give up the battle as he is trying to put himself in a position to get his first win of the season as we come down the back straightaway. DiBenedetto continues to lead the field and Talladega now coming to eight to go this time by as Kyle Busch looks to the outside for a moment but now he slides down in front of me to get to the inside as he once again goes back up to the top and then he, he really could not make up his mind at the moment as we come out of turn four. Elliott with a large run now down the front straightaway. I do not want him to get clear of me but as we come through the trial we do get back alongside his door just about even as we come to the line out of the trial P4 with eight to go now as the Benedetto is really doing a really solid job kind of just commanding this pack as everyone has now kind of come close together. We're really closer right now than we have been throughout this whole race as Case Kane on the outside behind Elliott. Now is a few laps later you see Kyle Busch ended up getting shuffled out as Chase Elliott got up to P2. He did get clear of me obviously. Now as he's up to second we're up to third. AJ Elmendinger now behind me in P4 as De Benedetto continues to lead doing a really good job out front here in Talladega. Now as we come down the back straightaway it's just what five laps to go at this point in the race. It'll be four at the line as Elliott looks to the outside to make a move for the lead. Side by side going into turn three for the lead between DiBenedetto and Elliott. Now mid-corner we close up the gap on them both as Elliott drifts backwards now as he clears himself from myself now as he gets into the bottom. Now as Logano has joined the party on the outside line as you can see in my mirror as we're going to drop down and help Almendinger obviously not wanting to give up the inside line as we cross the line. It is just four laps to go in Talladega now as we push the nine 
down the straightaway. And if you watch my channel long enough, you know Chase Elliott is my number one most hated driver in NASCAR. But I would much rather have him win this race if I can't than Matt Benedetto simply due to Matt Benedetto. To me, that car is a wasted playoff position, and I don't want any of those in the playoffs because we already have two or three of them. So I'm doing everything I can to help the nine car win this race if I can't do that. As we come through turns three and four, and we have trouble. Ty Dillon goes around midfield, and he's going to come back on track and hit Chris Buescher, and he's going to cause a pretty large incident now as he comes back up the track, and that's going to bring out a caution on lap 44, and that is going to force overtime as we're going to be starting on the inside side line behind Matt DiBattadetto now in perfect position to maybe have a chance to win this race in Talladega. Obviously we do not have a cup win yet in our career but now we have a chance this is the best chance we might have uh, at this early in the season we haven't had a chance this good yet as we go green overtime is underway in Talladega as we give a shot to the back of De Benedetto trying to help him clear the nine of Elliott I, I said I was going to help Elliott over De Benedetto but at this point we're in the better position so we need to try and make a move on De Benedetto as we try to get to his inside for a brief moment but there wasn't enough room between myself uh, and Benedetto and the line as uh, AJ Allmendinger closes up the gap now the top three drivers all without a win this season so we are easily about to lock someone new into the playoffs as we come down the back straight away just a lap and a half to go as me Benedetto and Allmendinger separate ourselves from the pack as Logano and Elliott they continue to battle side by side as we go into turns three and four they need to get themselves uh, figured out as we come through turns four you see De Benedetto just pulling away from me and this is what I was complaining complaining about earlier the speed difference between a five star and a three star team is just stupid with the setups in this game at this point since one of the most recent patches as we come across the line though to take the white flag three tenths behind De Benedetto it's looking like at this moment De Benedetto is set and he's going to get his first career win as well as a playoff lock as Newman now with a run on the outside line they have closed up as we slide up in front and try to get some help from him down the back straightaway as Logano now making a move to the outside of Omendinger and he's going to get to my inside down the back straightaway just about going into turns three we did not get down in time as he's going to gain the position as we have help from Kyle Busch and we're going to get stuck in the middle of a three wide between myself Truex and Newman as Logano closes the gap on De Benedetto with help from Almendinger down the front straight away Logano is about to steal the win from De Benedetto as we come through the tri oval he is going to take the lead in Talladega and Logano is going to steal the victory here from Matt De Benedetto as we finish P7 in Talladega after being second coming out of turn two certainly um, not what we were expecting at the end I think that we could have held on to second but I tried to make outside work because obviously we weren't running down Matt De Benedetto. so I tried something different it didn't work out and Joey Logano steals the victory within the last five seconds of this race so good job on him but uh, that would have been nice if we could have gotten the victory here in Talladega. But 7th place is not too bad compared to our last plate track, which was the Daytona 500. And you guys know how that went. I mean, we ended up flipping over. So uh, that was an interesting one. But uh, Logano, I believe that is his first win of the season. So that will lock him into a playoff position as well now. So that would be what we are. I think we're 10 for 10 on different winners now at this point, which is uh, crazy and not really... Uh, I don't really consider that to be a good thing necessarily. But uh, William Byron will apologize to him. And then we got Chase Elliott. I'm not going to apologize to Chase Elliott ever in my life. So we provoke him. Uh, I think it's the first time we've done that in Cup. But uh, next will be the truck race actually at Martinsville with Haley Deegan. So we're going to see how she can do. And I believe the Cup race is at Kansas or something like that. But uh, now we check the point standings or the playoff standings. Clint Boyer leads uh, the regular season standings, but Harvick leads the playoff standings, and uh, that's how the rest of the playoffs sit at the end of this episode. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Those would all be very appreciated, and I will see you guys in the next episode for the truck race with Haley Deegan, uh, a recap of that, and then the cup race. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have yourselves a great day.